Hi everybody, Beanmeister22 here. Hey, today we're going to look at something kind of neat and kind of old. Well, by kind of old, how about almost 2,000 years old? That's right. This is an ancient Egyptian bead necklace. Now, this came from an Egyptian tomb. Well, that's where it originally came from. Then it ended up in England, and then it was sold at auction multiple times, and then it ended up in my grubby little hands, you know, from an auction. Now, the necklace itself is over a thousand years old, but the beads, take it a step farther, the beads the necklace is made out of could actually be older. Yeah, that's hard to tell. How do they date these sort of things? Well, number one, they can look at the style of necklace, the style of the beads, and say, oh, this came from this era. Number two, and this is actually the easiest, they know what tomb it came out of. They know what archeological dig this came from. They know whose collection it was in, where it went, it went from this collection, it went to this museum, it was in this guy's collection, it was sold at auction, bam, bam, bam. So everything has a history, a paper trail, so to speak. So if this tomb was opened, as most were, in, you know, the late 1800s, early 1900s, and you know what tomb it came from, you know who was buried there, when they were buried, well, that's how you know when the necklace is from. Now, was the necklace made just for the buried person to wear in the afterlife? Was it a piece of treasure that you're supposed to pay to get into the afterlife, or you're supposed to pay your little servants in the afterlife? Or was this something, if not specifically made for that, is this something that had been in their family for generations? Was it stolen from another tomb? And to figure that out, you go back in history and you say, okay, these kind of beads were made from this era to that area, era, area. They were made, yeah, well, they're made in this area during this period of time. And that's how you can kind of figure out at least, you know, the, the prehistorical. And prehistorical, you know, means pre, before we have historical records on this. We don't have any paper trail. The paper trail actually begins when it was discovered in a tomb. And then in that paper trail, they'll say, okay, the tomb was buried 1,500 years ago is when the tomb was closed, so this came out of this, and then, yeah. So it is kind of neat, and it's kind of weird, too, but these are really old. Am I going to wear it? Well, no. But if we were to wear it, you'd want to restring it. I got no idea of the age of the string or cat gut or whatever they have, you know, for the necklace. Nor do I know if whatever it is, is the original stringing of it. Because I don't know what it's made of. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's not fishing line. But if you were to take this and then get a very fine gold chain, you know, a good quality one, and then put this necklace over it, well, then you'd have like an amazing piece of work. But it's amazing because of the historical value, not because it's, you know, super amazing. Well, I mean, it's amazing because look at the... They made these thousand years ago. These are really old. These weren't just made in some kid's art class last week. <laughs> the quality might be similar, right? But they have, uh, you know, they lasted the test of time. They have stood up. Look, at their, it's, it's still a necklace. You can tell what it is, right? All right, so do you collect ancient artifacts? I've said this in a video before. Do not buy ancient artifacts or ancient things on eBay or anything like that. I have seen fakes. I have seen reels. Unless they are from a reputable, respectable auction house and they has happened, just happened, to be selling something on eBay. And remember, let the buyer beware. If you are not buying from a respectable and I mean yeah, respectable with a history of quality, original, real, ancient artifacts, then you have no idea what you are getting. All right, so let the buyer beware. Leave your comments in the comment section. As always, thanks for watching. Beanmeister22, the most dangerous man on YouTube.